So here is the extension explanation as we work through this together. So uh, make sure that you go ahead and get the gizmo ready, like this asks you to do. And you want the, to set the mouse head start to 10 feet, 10 feet head start for the mouse, speed to six feet per second, six feet per second, and the cat speed to 13 feet per second. So that's all set. And you want to uncheck to the show whether cat catches mouse. Okay, you don't want that to be checked right now. Now, as you look at the graph, after entering the values above, select the table tab and click simulate to see the chase. But you, we can even look at the graph right now. What do you notice about the graph that helps you figure out whether the cat will catch the mouse? Hopefully you said that as you look at the graph, you notice that the cat's distance from the starting line versus time matches and intersects with the mouse's distance from the starting line, okay? So let's go ahead and go to the table. So go to the table tab and click on simulate. So here's the table. We can click on simulate to see the chase. And again, notice what happens when the cat catches the mouse. Well, you see the two lines intersect, right? And down here, at least, we're actually given a, a distance where the cat catches the mouse, okay? So what is true at the moment the cat catches the, the mouse? They are both the same distance away from the origin. Okay, origin being the x equals zero, y equals zero and their lines intersect, okay? Scroll through the table. What is the best estimate you can make for when the cat catches the mouse? So as you scroll through the table, what do you notice about where the cat is compared to the mouse? Well, in the beginning, the mouse had a 10 foot head start, right? And the cat started at zero. The mouse continues to move as the cat moves but what do you notice is happening by the time you get up around one second on this table? The cat's a lot closer to the mouse, right? So the cat was moving 13 feet per second where the mouse was only moving six. So the cat has covered 13 feet in the time it took the mouse to catch to move six. If the mouse goes another six feet, which six plus 16? 22. And if the cat goes another 13 feet, what's 13 plus 13? 26. Is 26 greater than 22? Yeah, so if this goes on, by two seconds of motion, the cat will have passed the mouse, okay? So as you look at the table, we're trying to find the times in the table for where the cat goes just past the mouse. Notice that at 1.4 seconds, the cat is just behind the mouse, but at 1.5 seconds, the cat would have passed the mouse. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the cat can catch the mouse somewhere between 1.4 and 1.5 seconds. So between 1.4 and 1.5, so the cat will catch the mouse between 1.4 and 1.5 seconds after the start. Now to find the exact coordinates of that intersection point, we can do some algebra. We can do some uh, mathematical manipulation, okay? So in general, the position of the mouse is described by this equation here. And the big thing is that this matches a particular format for equations. And I'm gonna show that to you when I get to the paper, but the distance the mouse is from the start equals the slope of the line <clears throat> times the time, because that's on the x-axis, plus b. m is the speed of the mouse in this case, t is the time, and the b is how much of a head start the mouse had. Writing a general equation for the cat's position using c for the cat speed, then the distance of the cat, how can you figure out what the distance of the cat is? Well, what's the speed of the cat? It's 13 feet per second. So we should put that in here. So we should say 13 feet per second, okay? 
times time plus B is the head start of the cat. Does the cat get a head start? No, the cat starts from zero, right? So in our equation, we would say plus zero feet, but it doesn't really mean anything that we're adding zero in, okay? Now, I, as a scientist, like to include the units in here in this equation. However, in math class, you might not always work with units. And so what's our equation here really gonna be? 13t plus zero is really what this would look like, okay? At the time of the catch, the distance the mouse has moved will equal the distance the cat has moved, okay? Set the expressions equal and solve for the time that the cat catches the mouse. So we have the distance for the cat, right? That's 13 T, that's the cat's position at any time T. And we're gonna not work with the units here. We're gonna understand that the units right now are supposed to be feet when we're looking at these distances. That's the cat, okay? What does that have to be equal to for the mouse? Well, the mouse is going 10, is going six feet per second and had a 10 foot head start, right? So the distance for the mouse is gonna be 6t plus 10. That's what the mouse is, is gonna be. Now, again, you might wanna say at the beginning here that you have d cat equals d mouse, okay? and d cat equals 13 t, which equals d mouse, which equals 6 t plus 10. So then we can put all of that together. We know everything there is equal, so we don't have to write the d's anymore for the cat and the mouse. So now we have 13 t equals 6 t plus 10. Well, in algebra, what you really want to do is you want to group like terms. And so these two terms that have t's in them, we want to put those onto the same side. How can we get rid of the 6t from both sides? Well, we can subtract it from both sides. So 13t minus 6t equals 6t plus 10 minus 6t. So on the right side of the equation, those six t's would go away. On the left side of the equation, you have 13 t's minus six t's. So you're left with seven t's or seven times time. This equals everything on the right side. Now, everything on the right side, those two six t's, one is positive, one is negative. We're subtracting six t from six t. So that's gonna leave us with zero t's on the right side, correct? So this is just gonna be a 10. So to solve for t, then we would divide both sides by seven. We want t to be by itself now, and that's gonna give us 10 over seven. In math class, it would probably be okay to keep that expressed as a fraction, but in science, we really like to go ahead and convert to decimals. You can show it is 10 over seven to show that there is an exact solution for this. And when you plug that into your calculator and solve, you get 1.428, 5, 7, et cetera, et cetera, seconds, okay? But for our final answer, we should probably round this um, with the equations that we had and the digits that we had for the head start and everything else, we've really only kind of got two significant figures here, maybe three, three digits if you are saying that you can read um, the decimals off the graph. And then four would really be pushing it, okay? So you probably wanna go ahead and round that to 1.4 seconds as your final answer. Is it possible to determine the time of capture? if all you know is the head start and difference between the two speeds? Is it possible to determine the time of capture if all you know is the head start and the difference between the two speeds? Yes, right? So look back at the work here and notice that the head start 
this 10, right? The mouse had a head start of 10 is equal to, what did we get? How did we get that seven times T? That's the difference between the two speeds, right? So the head start is equal to the difference between the speeds multiplied by time. So if the speed was 10 and six, would the mouse, would the cat catch the mouse? Eventually, right? Maybe not before the mouse reaches the hole, but eventually these two lines would overlap. So let's go ahead and reset, change the cat to 10. Eventually the lines would overlap, okay? We come to the table and simulate. The mouse escapes through the hole, but what do you notice is happening each time to the distances here? The cat's getting closer, right? So if we didn't have this cutoff, if these two lines actually continued on, then the, mouse, the cat would catch the mouse. Let's reset it, go back to 13. And let's move the mouse speed. Now, what's the difference between these two speeds? It's nine, right? The head start, the 10 feet is gonna equal nine times T. 10 over nine, which 10 divided by nine, you should be saying it's just over one, right? It would be one and one ninth. What fraction is one ninth equal to? Well, it's awfully cl close to a 10th. So we should see the cat, cat catch the mouse somewhere around 1.1 seconds. And if you look at the table, notice that at exactly 1.1 seconds, the cat is just behind the mouse. And at 1.2 seconds, the cat would be past the mouse already. So the cat is gonna catch the mouse just after 1.1 seconds. You can turn on and see the cat actually catches the mouse at 1.11 seconds, okay? That would be the solution. That's the intersection of those two lines. Um, in each problem below, use your equation to solve for t, then substitute this value into the dcat equation to find the distance. Show your work, if possible, check with the gizmo. So the big thing here is what did we say? The head start is always equal to the difference between the speeds multiplied by time. So keep that in mind as you work through these two. Okay, I'm gonna ask you guys to do these two on your own. But I will go ahead and show you the answer now to the original warm up, right? So Kristen is 20 miles behind a truck that is driving 50 miles per hour. How long will it take her to catch up to the truck? How far will she go in that time? And Kristen is driving 60 miles per hour. So let me flip to my document camera and turn on the lights. So in this case, Kristen's distance will be equal to the truck distance when she catches up to the truck, correct? And according to our question in the, let me make sure I'm sharing it the right way. According to our question in the gizmo, Kristen is driving 60 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour. Again, I'm just going to keep the 60 here times T. T is going to be number of hours for this question about Kristen and the truck. Okay. The truck is only moving 50 miles per hour, but the truck had a head start of 20 miles. And I'm seeing all that and I'm not showing you as I'm writing, so here we go. Here's what I've been writing. Kristen's distance is her speed times time. She started at zero. The truck's distance is its speed times time plus 20, okay? So because all of these speeds and distances are miles per hour or miles, so the key is that our distances here match, right? Our distance units are the same. 
So we have this expression for Kristen and the truck. We want a group like term. So we bring 60 T minus 50 T equals 20. We do that difference. So the difference between the speeds is 10. So 10 times the time equals 20. And then we're gonna divide both sides by 10. So now we have T equals 20 over 10. 20 over 10 is two. And remember, this is gonna be two hours. So it would take two hours for Kristen to catch the truck. Notice that in two hours, Kristen would travel 120 miles. While the truck would actually only travel 100 miles, it was already 20 miles ahead for its head start, right? So this is what all of this goes together to make. Now, the biggest thing with this, what you're trying to get out from this gizmo is that we have this big equation here that we're always going to express in science, at least as y equals mx plus b. This is always the y-axis. This is always the x-axis. Whatever the units are, whatever the actual thing is that you're measuring, if it's mass and volume, then those are the axes. If it's time and distance, then those are the axes. This m is your slope, and this b is the y-intercept. And you want to be able to relate these back to a graph. And so whenever you're looking at a graph, you want to be able to say that whatever this value is, this is where y equals b. And as you look at your line here, this rise over run equals slope. m is rise over run, OK? And then down here, this is your x-axis. This is your y-axis. And as long as x equals 0 here, then that where that line crosses that axis is your y-intercept. This is going to be key. Anytime we can in science, we always like to try to plot our data somehow or manipulate it so that we can plot it as a straight line. Straight lines are extremely powerful for us to be able to analyze our data to determine relationships between variables if there is a relationship between those variables, okay? Notice specifically that in this relationship, as the X variable increases, the Y variable also increases. And so this will also often be, not always, but often end up resulting in a direct relationship. If you think back to our discussion in class last week, about direct and inverse relationships, okay? I hope this is helpful for these extension questions. I want feedback from you guys. I'm not quite sure if you've covered this yet in math classes uh, this year or last year. So I'm interested in knowing whether this matches with what you've been doing so far in class or not. I will tell you that I'm not too concerned in this class about specifically being able to calculate the intercepts what I'm more interested in is having you understand the meaning behind these graphs and that if you're plotting the motion of these two things, then where those two lines intersect is where two things would collide or where something would catch up to something else. Okay. So again, I hope that's hope helpful. Please let me know what questions you have. Please give me feedback on this actual gizmo and how it fits in with the other math you've already been doing. Thanks.